But I want to start with something that Chris Smith touched on on this program last night. The Joe Biden gaffes, the stumbles, the confusion, they just continue and they get worse. Seriously, his staff probably can't wait to get him home to bed in the White House. But before he does that, the president has to go face to face with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which is a big worry, given what I'm about to show you. And believe me, most of the media just doesn't show you this stuff. Now, some of these clips are a bit long, but I want you to get a proper sense of what's going on here, a proper sense of how the US president is handling it. First up, top of the agenda between Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin ought to be Syria. But in the lead up, the US president seems to confuse that country with Libya. Um, we could work together with Russia, for example, uh, in, uh, in Libya. We should be opening up the, 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 the passes to be able to go through and provide uh, provide uh, um, food assistance and economic assi I mean, vital assistance to uh, a population that's in real trouble. I think I'm going to try very much hard to... Uh, it, it is... And by the way, there's places where... I shouldn't be starting off and negotiating in public here, but let me say it this way. Russia has engaged in activities which are, we believe are contrary to international norms. But they have also um, uh, bitten off some real problems they're going to have trouble chewing on. And, for example, the rebuilding of, uh, of, uh, of Syria, of, uh, of Libya, of, you know, this is, they're there. And as long as they're there without the ability to bring about some order in the, in the region, and you can't do that very well without providing for the basic economic needs of people. So I'm hopeful that we can find an accommodation that where we can save the lives of people in, for example, in, uh, in Libya. Libya or Syria? Does he know? Wow. Putin must be trembling in his boots, hey, on the eve of this summit. We seem to have gone from Russian collusion to Russian delusion. Because just have a listen to how Joe Biden responds to this question about, his, about how, exactly how he's described Vladimir Putin in the past. In a weekend interview, Vladimir Putin laughed at the suggestion that you had called him a killer. Is that still your belief, sir, that he is a killer? And I'll continue the trend, if you don't mind, of asking a second question. Do you believe if he does agree to cooperate, then what kind of a challenge do you find yourself in? How would you ever trust him? And if Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify, what do you say to Vladimir Putin? <laughs> Answer the first question? <laughs> I'm laughing, too. They actually, I... Well, look, I mean, he has made clear that uh, uh, the answer is, I believe he has in the past essentially acknowledged that he was, uh, there are certain things that he would do or did do. But look, um, when I was asked that question on air, I answered it honestly. But it's not much of a... I, 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 I don't think it matters a whole lot in terms of this next meeting we're about to have. Whew. If you could just draw all that together, I guess he's saying, yeah, he is a killer, but that doesn't matter now. See, it's more than awkward, isn't it? Biden's going to be representing the interests of the free world when he confronts the belligerent Russian president in their Geneva summit tomorrow. And it's hardly shaping up as Rocky Balboa versus Ivan Drago, is it? I said before the election that the Biden campaign had all the hallmarks of a weekend at Bernie's effort. Now he leads the free world. Biden has the opposite problem to Donald Trump. Trump refused to stay on script and was too blunt for many people, especially in diplomacy. Biden can only work by reading a script. Once he wanders off on his own, no one knows where he's going to end up. It's a worry for the US, for you and me, but not for Putin.